Great singing, you all. Thank you. No. <laughs> well, we're continuing with the Holy Spirit and uh, just talking about um, learning and growing in, in our understanding of that so that we can um, just live in connection with the Spirit better. Um, I know it's been fun for me to kind of recapture and rethink about some things. Um, we're moving, we've, we started with Luke, then we went to John, and now we're in, with Paul primarily, and, and in Romans. So if you want to go ahead and turn to Romans 8, um, you can. The first part of Romans is really a theological statement, if you will, of what we need. If you remember the old Roman road, um, you know, Romans 3.23 says, All sin and fallen short of the glory of God. And so he makes the case for that. And then he goes on for the chapter 6 to say, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And so he's making a case that there's a way out of your sin. And then in chapter 7, it's that, in fact, we talked a little bit about Wednesday night, there's that part about the very thing I want to do, I can't do, and what I can't, you know, that, that whole battle kind of inside Paul. And he says, who can save us from this, this, this predicament, basically? And it says, Jesus Christ. And then we get, jump into 8, there's no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And so we're just going to read chapter 8, because it's the one that talks about really life in the Spirit. What does it look like to live being led, guided, just in, engaged with the Spirit of God? And so let's read that, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Therefore there, is no, therefore, there is now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin to, in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but on the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to, a, to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in that fear again, Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for just this powerful word that just really outlines how we are to live in the Spirit. 
It's not based on what we've done. It's based on what you've done. But it gives us life and takes us away from death if we'll just allow your spirit to live in and through us. And so, God, I pray today that as we open your word, as we think about your word and, and just talk about a few things, I pray, God, that as only you can, you would enliven that to our souls and to our spirits. God, we need you to speak into this moment. This is hard stuff. This is Paul's writing some deep theology. But it's not too, too deep because your spirit guides us and leads us into truth. And so we're just trusting in that. We're trusting that you're going to lead us into the truth and guide us into the truth that, and teach us the things we need to know about these things. And so we just give this to you and we look forward to what you're going to say to us. And Father God, as you press on us a little bit maybe, may we have the courage to trust your love for us. And that even though it may be a little hard, maybe it's a little more than we want, that we're just going to trust that that is still what's best for us because that is your heart for us to have life. So in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, we, um, Paul's unpacking this whole thing, and there's a lot here, and, and you probably see that. And even as I was reading it again, I go, whoa, there's a lot here. And, uh, I think a guy can really guide us through the. First of all, it talks about we're going to be set free. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I've never really had that experience on a, a, a bigger stage. You know, I've never been captured or anything other than like playing a game or something. I th sometimes when we got through on the submarine, I felt like I was set free after the patrol we did. And uh, I guess that would be the closest I had. I don't know if anything's like that happened to you. But there is something about just this freedom that that we have. And that's what we need to realize. Sometimes people think they're freer when they're sinning. And that is such a lie of the enemy. And I don't know about you, but there are times when, when I even get caught in that. Um, that I think, oh, I just get to do whatever I want. Then I can be free. I remember on my birthday. I don't know how about you, but sometimes, sometimes those special days almost become selfish days if you're not careful. And so I just say, I'm going to do whatever I want on my birthday. And so I can remember going and doing whatever I want. Whatever I want. And, and it was... It was, it was it was not fun at all. <laughs> I was like, what did I do this for? What a waste of day. Um, because we get that way. I remember uh, we got back into the Baptist church. Or actually, I got back into the Baptist church. I was raised different. But um, we were in Virginia. I remember the pastor, and I thought this was a moment of real uh, kind of revealing. Uh, and he just said, you know, for a while... On my day off, I decided, I'm going to take a day off. I'm not even going to read my Bible. And he said, after about two months, I realized, those are the worst days I have all week. And, and, and so he just said, well, what was I thinking? I mean, just because we kind of have a day off or we have a birthday or whatever, we, we think doing what we want all the time is freedom, but it's not. It's just another form of bondage. It's another form of slavery. And that's what Paul's getting at here. He says the Spirit sets you free because of what Christ has done in you. And that first statement, there's no condemnation. I love what this commentator says. He says, you know, when we feel guilty, sometimes when we feel guilty, we're actually, um, in many ways, saying, thinking we need to help God with our salvation. It's, a, it's another form of works. When you feel guilt, I just feel so bad about stuff. And maybe you've met people like that. They're the people that when you walk by, they just kind of suck the energy out of you, right? You have any of those in your life? I mean, there's just people that just, that just emotionally, this need, 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 need. And when you do walk by, and, and, and I feel bad for them. But, but, but sometimes when we live there, if we're not careful, what we're actually doing is saying, God, you need help with my salvation. You're not doing enough. I've got to feel guilty about what I'm doing. And I just kind of thought that was an interesting way to put it. But the Spirit is the one who gives life. The Spirit is the one that enlivens us. And God sent His Son in, that, that in order for that to happen so we can take care of all the requirements of the law. Everything that's required by the law has been taken care of through Jesus Christ. Everything. And so we can live in freedom because of that. What great news. Every requirement that God required through the law, Jesus took care of. Now Jesus, you know, I, I love studying about Jesus, I like reading about Jesus, I love thinking about what he's did and what he's done in my life. But part of what's hard is, okay, he's, 
He's God, but at the same time, he's man. <laughs> what does that look like? And we talked about it once Wednesday night, a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and, and it's hard. I mean, those theologians have been arguing this forever. In fact, there's some certain groups that grabbed his divinity and took off with that. Others have, have grabbed his humanity and taken off with that because it's hard to balance that because it's bigger than our brains, right? I don't know about you. Some people have a hard time doing that. I don't know what it is about me. I have no problem saying that's just bigger than my brain. I don't, I'm just not ever going to fully understand that. But I understand what it means. And that's the real key. Even if I don't understand how it works. I mean, I, I know a little bit about automatic uh, uh, cars, but I don't know a lot about them. All I know is if I turn the key and it turns on, I can drive. If it doesn't, then I don't. I don't have to understand all the way the engine works. I don't have to have a degree in mechanical engineering or be a mechanic in order to use that. Because all I have to do is know what it does. And that's kind of the same here because, again, I like what this guy said. He says, if Christ had not taken on our nature, he could not have been one of us. So he took on, he voluntarily took on our nature. But on the other hand, had he become completely like us, i.e. that he sinned, then he could not have become our Savior. And so that's that mystery. I don't get it. I don't see. Somehow he took on the limitations of man, but didn't sin. And I believe, as he was on earth, even though he was still God, because he had taken on the limitations of man, that was real. Because if he was going to be a sacrifice for us, he couldn't, he couldn't be God. Because he's not a sacrifice for humans. And so that's what, and, and, and again, my brain kind of starts hurting when I think through that, but I just go, hallelujah is what I really do, because I just know it happened. And I don't have to understand it all. I don't have to get all that. And when I get to heaven, guess what? I'm not going to care. <laughs> I, I know I used to do, maybe you've done this before. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask about this. I'm going to ask about this. I'm going to ask then I realized, when I get to heaven, I'm not going to care anything about any of that stuff. Because God's going to be wiping the tears away from my eyes. Which I've always wondered is how to have tears. But we'll figure that out. <laughs> but he's going to be right there. And so anyway, Romans comes up to this part, kind of explaining all the theology of our fall and what the purpose of the law was. and You know, we tried to do what we're supposed to do, but we don't. And, and then chapter 8 is like, here's how you do it. And that's what we're talking about today. And that first part is to understand the Spirit gives life. The second one is talks about our mindset. What is our mindset on? And, and when you think about that, I, I love to think about what do you think about all the time? What, what's in your mind? What's rolling through your mind all the time? See, I know people that they're rolling through their mind all the time. Is how, how can I make more? How can I have more? That's what they think about all the time. How can I leverage my business to do better? How can I do that? Now, there's some of that that's okay, but if that's all you think about, that's what your mind's set on, then, then you've got to really think through that. I think God wants us to work. I think God wants us to provide. I think God wants us to do all those things. But it can't capture your mind. I remember a friend of mine, um, he was offered a kind of a, one of those um, kind of businesses you kind of work on the side and some people make really a lot of money on it or supposedly they do. And, and he, he, he was very, um, um, I don't know how you say it, he kind of uh, outgoing and people loved to be around him. He attracted people. And so he thought he would do pretty good on that. And so he started doing it a little bit and sure enough, he did fairly well on it. But one thing that happened, he said, was I started thinking about that more than I started thinking about God and what God wanted to do. And so he quit, even though he was doing good money. And people, if you'd have looked from the outside, you'd have said, oh, he's doing such great things. He's kept time with his family. All that. But, but what he knew in his spirit was that his mind was on that and not on the things of God. That's what this is talking about. What is your mindset? What do you think about? If you have a mind governed by the Spirit, you have life. Are you thinking about the spiritual things of God? Are you thinking about that? I admitted a couple weeks ago, and I still get caught in this. You know, you get frustrated with something that may happen to one of your kids, and you, you start thinking more about that than you think about their spiritual condition. 
And, and I, and I got to catch myself on that. Especially too with the sports, to be honest with you. Sometimes I think, you know, coaches are coaches, they're human, but guess what? They don't always do what I want. If you had a kid, I'm guessing that probably landed on you too. They just don't. They, they, they see things differently sometimes. And that's happened with my oldest kids. It's happened with these kids. And so sometimes I get thinking about that, and I go, hold it. I should be thinking about the spiritual part of their life. Sure, this is fun, and this is good, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, they're not playing in the NFL. They're not playing, you know, professional baseball. They're not playing in the NBA. They're not. But they're always going to be living for Christ. And so I just got to catch myself on that and say, no, don't do that. And God's gracious enough to remind me sometimes with a baseball bat. But anyway. <laughs> but then he talks about the mind governed by the flesh. And I think this is really insightful because he says in verse 7, they can't even do it. We were talking Wednesday night about some things and we were talking about some uh, we were talking about love and how I, I admitted I was frustrated sometimes when people say they love them, but yet they're not willing to do the things they need to do to actually show love to them. And, and, and then this verse hit me as I was I reminded me, because people apart from Christ cannot do that. It's not that they don't want to. Did you get that? Let's just read it again. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. Verse 7. It does not submit to God's law. Now listen to this. Nor can it do it. And so when you see someone on TV that just turns your stomach over because you're like, how could they do that? Right here. Paul is telling you why they can't do that. Because it's sin and they're not following Jesus and they can't do anything else. Now once in a while they may rise above their fleshly nature, but for the most part, they can't do it. They're always going to look out for themselves. And that's kind of harsh, maybe, but that's just what it says. And, and it helps me to realize they can't do anything different because that's their nature. And then it goes on to say, those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Now, I don't know about you, but that helps. It, it, it kind of gives me grace toward people. And I think, man, if, if, I, if everywhere there's a time when we need grace, it's, it's now. I caught myself today. I was, I was grabbing something from McDonald's on the way here. And uh, this is, y'all may fire me after this. Um, <laughs> but I just got to admit it because it's just so small and petty. The guy in front of me, the person in front of me, I don't know if the guy got, you know, they, they pulled up just a little bit, so I couldn't quite pull up far enough to order. Right? And they, they had plenty of room. I'm like, what? Let's pull up. <laughs> you know? And then God is just like, you an idiot, Gene. And, and I, I had to agree with him. But I heard of a fist fight in McDonald's over that not too long ago. You didn't pull on a phone before. But I'm, literally, I got my food maybe 15 seconds later than I would have otherwise. But, but, but I think God... God has to point those little things out to us just to remind us, hey, dude, you need me every moment, even when you're in the McDonald's line. You need me. You need me in the Walmart line. When the lady, you're behind, you think it's the shortest line, you're in a hurry, and then all of a sudden they pull out, maybe a man, pulls out the big stack of coupons, and, they, and you're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> And you're like, ah, I even prayed about this, God. This was the line you led me to. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but see, those little things are indicators. There's one of the basic principles of, of Scripture is if you're faithful in little things, you will be faithful in much. And I, so the little things are important. And so I didn't just sit there and go, okay, it's no big deal. I said, God, I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not even in a hurry. I have no idea why I think I have to pull up two more feet so they'll take my order. I'm not, I just confessed it right there. But see, if you let those things drag, pretty soon those little things add up and they become bigger things and your heart is different. Or well, mine is anyway. And so, what's your mind set on? In fact, I like what he said, the commentator said this, act your way 
into new thinking. See, there's this idea that we're supposed to think our way into new acting. And that rarely happens. A better idea is to begin doing what you want to do anyway, and then you begin thinking differently about it. So act your way into new thinking. So that's your mindset. What's your mindset on? And then where you live, what, what do you, what, what, what you focused your life on? And that's what he talks about next. It talks about the Spirit being in you because you live a certain way. Your body is dead, but the Spirit gives you life. And really, when you think of death, death is really just separation from God. It's, it's God not being there. And so, that's what he's talking about here. So, so when he talks about life, it means God is with you right there. And I just love to think in terms of the fact that the Spirit gives life to our mortal bodies. There's no life, not real life, apart from that. That's why they say things like, apart from me, you can do nothing. He doesn't mean you can't do stuff. He means you can't do anything that really matters. You can't do anything that really matters. And I'm telling you, that's such a hot thing to, to keep prioritized. Um, I try to share with our kids all the time. You know, I, I think school is important. I think there's things we need. I think it teaches you to think. I think lots of things are important. But sometimes I think we can get caught up in factual information. I think it's really going to be challenging when, like I said, a couple of, you know, obviously a month or so ago when I used Siri, you know. Because, <laughs> let's just be honest, there's a lot of information on fingertips that didn't used to be. And so I'm like, okay, how does that change the way we teach? You know? But I think sometimes if we're not careful, we, we focus so much on that that we don't lift up things like relational intelligence. My, one of my kiddos is just great with this. They, they just have a... They're, they're not great in school. They, they, they really have to work hard. But the way that they look at people and the way that they include people and the way that they interact with people just amazes me just absolutely amazes me. And I keep trying to tell him, I said, huh, I know it doesn't seem like it because you're not doing as well as you like in school, but this is going to help you more than that's probably going to. You can get a calculator and figure out what 8 times 7 is. But, but there's a lot of people in the world that, that don't know how to relate to people. And that will serve you better. So just keep honing that skill as well. And again, I'm not smashing eight times seven. I, yeah, do it. But I just, we have to be careful that we don't lock into certain types of smartness and, and miss some others and not reward that. I love what he said. This, again, it says, the key to freedom is a constant reliance on the active presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what it talks about when you live there. Constant reliance on the active presence of the Spirit. See, that's what I want. See, you probably heard the verse, pray without ceasing. See, the, I, I want my life to do that. In fact, if they could put that, he prayed without ceasing. I, that'd be, that would be the ultimate epi, epitaph on my tombstone, is people thought that about me. Not because I was constantly saying prayers, but because he, I was constantly, they just sensed I was constantly, constantly, constantly had the Spirit of God on my mind. Constantly in communion with the Father. That's what I want. That's what I try to live. And so when I get caught up in stuff like McDonald's and stuff, that frustrates me. And maybe that's why I did the combination thing. I don't know. But, but God was pretty specific about that conviction. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, and then last, it talks about being led by the Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Just let that wash over you. Have you thought about that? Have you thought of what a great honor that is? You're a child of the king. Whew. Just let that sink in. When you let Christ lead you, you're his children. And I love it because it says, and, and it's no longer we slaves so that you live in fear again. 
But rather the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship and daughtership, I believe it means. It means all, not just sons. And by him who cry, Abba, that word of intimacy with the Father. That's what you have. Paul writes later that we can come boldly before the throne of grace and mercy. Have you ever thought about that? I can't even get into my doctor sometimes, right? But the God of heaven and earth, I can come boldly before his throne because I'm his child. Just think about that. Think about the privilege that is. Think about what that means as us being his kids. And when we live in the Spirit, that's where we are. He goes on to say, now if we are His children, then we're His heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share. Lost the last one. Hold on. There it is. In His suffering, in order that we may also share in His glory. So Christ is calling us to live like He did in the Spirit of God. And when we do that, we're going to keep our mindset on the things that matter. One of the questions I ask people when there's <laughs> frustration is, what are you going to think about this in five years? Well, I probably remember it. My, my kids are even very tired of that one. I have to think of a new one now because it's like, I know, I know. I'm not even going to remember it. You're right. You're not. You're not. When you get older, you're not going to remember this. Or if it is, you're going to laugh about it. The other day I was with, with Hunter and... Um, and, I, and, and, he, and he'd done something kind of knuckleheady. And uh, imagine that, a 14-year-old. I was shocked. Um, <laughs> I was. I was just absolutely shocked. No. <laughs> and because um, 14, I was perfect, so I can't figure it out. Um, I'm not going to ever have my mom come here. Um, but, uh, but he'd done something, and he's like, I know. You know, he, you know, it was one of those moments that was fairly good when he gets in trouble. And I said, you know what, I hope. I hope in 20 years we're sitting around playing games and I'm drooling because I'm old um, and you're all laughing at me and, and, and we're just going to laugh about this. And we say, remember the time. And you're going to go, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. See, we just got to be careful that we let God's Spirit help us put into context what some of these things really mean. Now don't get me wrong, there's some stuff we got to deal with. But sometimes I think we get really caught up in stuff that, that really in 20, 30, 40 years in eternity, it doesn't matter. And I just know when I keep, when the Spirit's in me and He's reminding me of that, my relationships with my kids are better. My relationship with my wife is better. My relationship with my coworkers is better. And it's not because I've all of a sudden gotten better. It's because I'm keeping in context what the Spirit is saying. That my, my mind's on the Spirit. I'm being led by the Spirit. I'm living in the Spirit. Those things are happening and therefore, not perfect by any means, but, but God is helping me to live in a way that I think brings glory to Him and points people to our Savior. So just think, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That you're one of the King's kids and you can celebrate that. And as we live in the Spirit of God, there is a joy in us that is unbelievable because we have been set free. Amen. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, thank you so much for this word from Paul. It's just, it is so powerful. And God, I pray that even this week, we might just read this section over and over and over again. Just let it sink into our souls so that we really do live differently because of it. That people see a difference in us. God, I know my kids see a difference when I respond just off the cuff or whether I allow your spirit to lead me as I respond. They see a difference. I believe that's true with everyone that I'm around. I'm so glad the guy in front of me at McDonald's probably didn't notice that I was really mad at him. But God, I want to be the kind of person that radiates your glory, radiates your love, radiates the life that's in you. And I only can do that when I'm connected to your spirit. And so God in heaven, may these verses just resonate deeper in my soul. And I pray that for everyone here. 
But it all starts with receiving you as Christ. That's what it's all started on. We're set free because of Jesus. And so again, if there's someone here that's not done that, God, I pray they eat right there at their seat or come up and talk to me. They take care of that. You, because if they don't, they cannot do it. They cannot please God without that. And so God, I pray that shows the importance of that and the power we receive from that. So thank you, God. As we stand and sing, we're just looking forward to what you want to do in our hearts. Amen. I know. We have a board. There it is. Room at the cross. Four. 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 Room at the cross. Be seated.